But I think we're going to see the economy start to slow in the third quarter, and that slowing is going to pick up speed as we get into the fourth quarter. But the Fed isn't going to react immediately by lowering rates. And I think that's going to be the hard part for the market to accept, if you will. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are watching, listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, this person uh, who we're going to hear from today was correct about inflation. And uh, hey, let's see if uh, what he's thinking in terms of a hard landing, soft landing, or we'll just say stay suspended in the air forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah, forever and ever. Jim Welsh, macrotides.com with us. Jim, welcome back. So Great to join you, Kerry. So inflation's over. We can all rest assured. We don't have to worry about anything because uh, they fixed it, right? Uh, not quite. <laughs> no, um, you didn't you know, fix it? No, they not entirely. Um, again, last October, I began to write that we were going to see a significant decline in inflation uh, in the first half of this year, predominantly because the takeaway values carry from last year. Because the CBI is a rate of change. So you have sub subtract the number from 12 months ago and you add in the current month. So I was talking about back in February this year that we could see the CPI down to 3%, which we found out that's exactly where it went. And in part was because the takeaway value from June of 2022 was 1.3%. And, and then you just add whatever the current month's uh, change is. In this case, it was 0.2%. And that implied that we could see the CPI drop by about a percent, which it did from four to three. Mm. What your uh, listeners and viewers will see in one of the charts I provided is going forward the next six months, uh, the numbers change. So instead of the average monthly decline in the first six months was 0.89%, uh, it's only 0.2%. In July, it's flat. August, it's 12 basis points. So if the CPI continues to be up 0.2% in the next two months when we get the August reading in mid-September, the mm -hmm. CPI is going to go from 3 to maybe 3.3, 3, maybe 3.4. So the only point being is that a lot of the improvement uh, was because of the re you know reversal from last year's uh, numbers. And what I've written about is um, the thing that could make that an even worse comparison is I think energy prices are, uh, in terms of oil, going to head higher. The low in June was around $67. It's trading around 76 Based on the chart, I think crude oil can get to 81 They get much above that, 86 And nat gas prices bottomed at $225. Uh, they're, I think, 260 something I think potentially mm -hmm. they could get to 340 So the point being is the big takeaway values were led by a big decline in energy costs, and they're now reversing. So the CPI in the next few months may tick higher than just the 0.3 or 0.4 um, that I indicated. <clears throat> and then also food prices. Uh, Russia ended their deal with Ukraine. We've seen grain prices in terms of corn and wheat jump three, four, five percent Again, that will add to the headline inflation in coming months. So, um, you know, it's not like, oh my gosh, the world is falling. But a lot of people have kind of built in the assumption to your question, oh, inflation's behind us. It's not a problem. And I don't believe that's the case. All right. So uh, it is a problem. And the uh, unemployment employment numbers, also a problem, isn't it? I think so. Um, historically, we know that monetary policy acts for the lag. Uh, the average recession uh, has taken 19 months to begin after a yield curve inversion. So the yield curve inverted in July of last year, which kind of implies by late this year, early next year, would be the average lag time. Um, mm -hmm. There's a chart that I provided showing the federal funds rate. And what was done in this chart, Kerry, is they pushed the federal funds rate forward by 18 months, in a sense, to account for that lag time 
and then overlaid unemployment claims on top of it. And what we can see is uh, historically a big increase in unemployment claims have followed after big increases in the federal funds rate. Well, the Fed funds rate started up in March of last year. 18 months gets us right. basically to September. So my point is that we're going to see the unemployment numbers start to tick up later this year. The job numbers are already starting to slow. The 209,000 looked like a good number on the top, but 60,000 of that was government jobs. Uh, hours worked have been declining uh, significantly over the last 12, 18 months. Looking at unemployment claims, they're starting to creep higher. So the point being, Kerry, is that I believe we're going to see the labor market start to reflect the impact from higher interest rates. And the Fed itself uh, has projected that next year, the unemployment rate will get to 4.5%. Well, anything, anytime there's been a 0.5%, in other words, you go from three and a half to four, that's been a recession or you're on the doorstep or in a recession. So, you know, the Fed wants to get inflation down. The biggest declines in inflation have occurred during recessions. Mm -hmm. So I know the Fed wants to avoid a recession, but I think the combination of the yield curve inversion, leading economic indicators, which have dropped 14 months in a row, and whenever they've declined as much as they have, there's always been a recession in the last 50 years. And lastly, mm -hmm. lending standards uh, have been increased significantly before the regional bank crisis in March. Lag time is about nine months. I mean, you think about it, if you're a small business owner and you have a loan due in September, well, the increase in lending standards that took place late last year, you haven't felt it, but yeah. you will feel it when your loan comes due in terms of either cost of the loan is going to go up significantly and potentially what also starts to happen is banks start to scrutinize. Do they want to give you the same amount of money? Mm -hmm. Their outlook is that the economy is going to slow. So- Again, a lot of this stuff has built in lag times. And what's happened is a year ago, as you know, everyone was talking recession, recession. Sure. I pushed back against it. I said, there's not going to be a recession in 2022. And I, in my monthly macro tides, I went through explanations why. I didn't think there would be a recession in the first half of this year. But I think we're going to see the economy start to slow in the third quarter. And that slowing is going to pick up speed as we get into the fourth quarter. But the Fed isn't going to react immediately by lowering rates. And I think that's going to be the hard part for the market to accept, if you will. All right. So uh, so everything you know is wrong, in other words. Huh? Everything you're thinking of. Well, again, markets are, kind of, as you know, I mean, markets are kind of weird. Everyone thought there was going to be a recession for the wrong yeah. reasons. Just because you had two quarters in a row of negative GDP, well, historically, that's been a pretty good benchmark. But in the first half of last year, job growth was averaging 350,000 new jobs. That's like a boom. I mean, uh, gross domestic income uh, was up in the first quarter of last year and the third quarter. So even while GDP was down, GDI was up in the first quarter and the National uh, Bureau of Economic Research, so that's the outfit that determines the beginning and ends of recession. Right. They don't look just at gross domestic product. They look at six different groups of indicators, and they weight gross domestic income equally with gross domestic product. Now, here's the thing. No one's talking about it. In the fourth quarter, GDI was down 3.5%, and it was down, I think, 1.3% in the first quarter. So in other words, these are all, in my opinion, signs that things are under the surface, slowly but surely uh, slowing down. And it all adds up in my mind, you know, that the economy is going to slow in the second half of this year. Yeah. And I think more so next year. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So, uh, so more slowing. Do you think we'll have a legitimate recession then? A uh, problem. I mean, there's going to be at least one quarter of negative GDP growth. I think mm -hmm. the odds of a recession are very high, um, but it may not really kick in until we get into the early part of next year. And again, I'm relying on the yield curve, LEI, uh, lending standards going up, and a little common sense. Every time those indicators have hit levels that they are currently at, uh, there's been a recession going back the last 60 years. So are they reliable? Yeah, absolutely. At a minimum, a significant slowdown. 
Now, what's I- ironic is uh, equity investors, because everyone was wrong about the recession last year or the first half of this year, now, hey, we don't have to worry about a recession. Uh, Merrill Lynch does a, a survey every month of um, I mean, managers, money managers. 68% don't think we're going to have a recession. So it's really you know, shifted significantly from where it was a year ago. And it's almost perfect setup where now that no one's anticipating a recession, uh, the odds are that it's likely going to increase. And I'm not trying to be flippant. Again, it's based on yeah. the historical performance of very good indicators. All right. So is it going to be a hard landing or a soft landing? Very difficult to know uh, because a lot of things show up out of the woodwork that can't be anticipated. I think commercial real estate is going to be a problem next year. Uh, you know, obviously office buildings, even shopping malls. Um, you know, we don't know how much unemployment will go up. Um, so to me, it doesn't, at this point in time, it's, it, given that most people aren't looking for a recession, the fact that there's a recession likely is enough of a uh, surprise, a negative surprise, right. I think, for most investors. If it turns out to be a hard landing, well, it's just going to be a really bad surprise. And we don't need to know that at this point in time. Yeah. Yep. 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 All right. So if you had to hazard a guess, your inclination, your gut, all these years you've been doing this, what's your feeling? I think it's going to be worse than a soft landing. Okay. You know, you know uh, I, I just, there's just a lot of excesses that have built up and um, it mm-hmm. takes time to address them. And, um, Again, people have been able to keep spending because of the accumulated savings, extra savings that they had because of the pandemic distribution of money. They weren't allowed to go out, but that savings is starting to whittle down. And so the slowdown in spending is already starting to show up. Same store sales last week came out, Kerry. They were uh, down slightly. Um, uh, We're seeing more signs of credit card uh, stress showing up. Um, so some of the things that got overlooked last week in terms of, gee, the CPI dropped and oh, isn't that wonderful? Um, real number, uh, another one. The government gives a report in terms of revenues and expenditures. Well, expenditures are still quite strong, which is, again, one of the reasons why the economy has been hanging in there. Mm-hmm. But income uh, you know, in other words, taxes peaked uh, in the fourth quarter of last year and have been trending down so far th- through the first six months of this year. Historically, that's another leading indicator that you're approaching a recession. So a lot of these things are moving in that direction. It just is like it always does. It just takes longer than people expect. And in this case, it's kind of fooled them to think that, okay, if it hasn't happened by now, it's not going to happen. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm glad we touched base. Glad we got your latest update. I will. Uh, we have some charts on the markets. If you want to cover those real quick, yeah, let's let's cover them. Sure. Yeah. So you know, gold. Um, I think gold completed the first phase, uh, if you will, of the next bull market when it rallied from 1616 to 2059. Since early May, I've been looking for a wave two pullback. Uh, the 382 retracement of the rally was 1894 or 90, and it got to 1894. It's possible the pullback is done, Kerry. I still think the odds are we're going to see one more dip in gold below 1894 before we see the beginning of the next leg higher that will take gold to new all-time highs. 2300, 2400 is definitely uh, in reach. In terms of the S&P 500, we're at a really interesting juncture. Uh, the 618, pardon me, the 786 retracement of the decline last year is uh, 4534. We're within 1% of that at, at this point in time. Um, the, the big rally up from October into early December, pull back into March, the rally we've seen since March, those two legs are equal at 4512. So these measurements to me suggest we're in the zip code of what could be an important high. The fundamentals suggest that, hey, people are overestimating the positive uh, part about the economy. Sentiment has gotten really pretty wildly bullish. The only thing that's really happening and still in good shape is momentum. So that is the next thing that needs to happen to kind of start to confirm this stuff. 
Yeah, you know, right. I would discount. And so on the chart of the S&P, you see wave A down to October, big ABC up to a B wave high. <clears throat> what that implies, Kerry, is the potential of a C wave decline that'll undercut the lows of October. Now, if I thought the Fed was going to be cutting rates soon, or that the economy was going to be holding in there well or gaining strength, that would cast doubt on that pattern analysis. The fact it's just the opposite, you know, it means like, okay, it's time to get pretty cautious, I think, um, that given where prices are at this point in time. All right. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, hey, the banking crisis is it going to come back with a vengeance or is it over for now? Well, I think the one that happened in March got blown out of proportion, quite honestly. It was three banks that were extraordinarily uh, badly managed mm -hmm. um, uh, based on their mismatch between deposits and liabilities and everything else. So to me, that was never likely to become, oh my God, a full-blown thing. The key thing is, and people are like, oh, we're going to have a credit crunch. No. But the real problem is that lending standards uh, at the in the first quarter got up to 46%. They got to 43% at the end of last year. Historically, going back the last 50 years, when under other, whenever more than 20% of banks have raised lending standards, we've had a recession. Well, it was 43% in the last year and 46 in the first quarter. So to me, that is the bigger issue. No one's talking about it. You know, they were worried, oh my God, the sky's going to fall. That created some negativity. Um, the market got oversold, and we've seen the market rally. And the employment report for May that came out, I think it was June 2nd, and it was 309,000. That really seemed to solidify people's viewpoint that, oh, we don't have to worry about a recession for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And we've seen cyclical stocks rally, small cap stocks rally. Uh, again, on the idea that we're not going to have a recession. And if we do, it's going to be an inconvenient, you know, soft landing. So uh, we're at, I think, you know, an inflection point potentially in a number of these markets. All right. Well, interesting. Very, very interesting uh, times ahead here, Jim. Um, we always appreciate your coming on and uh, giving us your insight. Uh, macrotides.com is where you find Jim. And there's Please a do. link in the show notes to this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. And Kerry, I would like to offer uh, the sure. July macro tides to anyone who all they have to do is send me an email, Jim Welsh macro at Gmail, and I'll send you the Great. July issue. Covered a lot of important points regarding the, the uh, labor market. Um, and I think they'll find it pretty, and I'll probably toss in the, the most recent mm -hmm. weekly technical review. Uh, a week Great. and a half ago, I was looking for the S&P to rally above 4,500. Uh, the dollar to drop below 100 to have a sharp decline that had formed a triangle. I thought bond yields would come down a little bit, and I thought gold would pop, uh, all based on that big decline in the CPI report. So I, I'm happy to send those reports out to your faithful listeners. All right. Hey, if you got any questions, kl at kerrylutz.com. And uh, I appreciate you coming on. We will talk to you again soon, Jim. Sounds good. Stay well, Kerry. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.